Good day, viewers. You are welcome back to class. Again, remember in our previous video, we talked about electrolysis of acidified water, which simply means um, dilute H2SO4. So if you have any questions in any of my videos I'll be putting in this channel, kindly put it in the comment section. And I'll show you, I always reply. I always uh, reply your comment. Uh, today, we are going to talk about electrolysis of dilute. Um, we are going to talk about electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride and also electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride. So let's, let's go to the one of dilute sodium chloride. Let's say this A. Remember the topic is just on electrolysis. Examples of electrolysis. That's what we are still discussing in this uh, uh, um, video. So, electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride. Now, when you say dilute sodium chloride, it means you have brought the sodium chloride and dissolve it in water. Remember, sodium chloride is the common salt we use in kitchen. So, you have um, NaCl. This one will undergo ionization based on the ionic theory. And I just want to give you Na plus Cl minus. You see it. So, this is what will happen because it's in a cure solution. After this one has happened, because it is dissolved in water, the water in which it is dissolved will also undergo ionization. So you have H2O. You see it. This is just a simple explanation of the topic. H2O. This one comes H plus, just like we said the other time, plus OH minus. Remember this, a liquid. Now, you see the two. What now happens is this. Both sodium ion and the hydrogen ion, they will migrate to the cathode. While the chloride ion and the hydroxyl ion will migrate to the anode. Because the cathode is negatively charged, you have the cathode highly negative. Let me just demarcate it here. You have the anode positive. This rich in electrons, deficient of electrons. Therefore, both the sodium and the hydrogen ion migrate to the cathode. Remember, sodium ion is highly electropositive. It prefers to remain inside solution. It doesn't want to leave. Unlike the hydrogen ion, which is lower in the electrochemical series, to be preferred. Therefore, just like the other class, hydrogen plus, we go to the cathode, which is already rich in electrons, pick up one electron to become atomic hydrogen. This atomic hydrogen cannot exist like this because the thing happens severally. So, so many, um, it happens so many, in so many uh, fractions inside the solution, hydrogen will combine with another hydrogen to give hydrogen gas, which will give it off as bubbles. Then, for this, you have um, OH and, we have done this, OH and the chloride ion will migrate to the anode. But, because the solution is dilute, the concentration of the chloride ion is not sufficient. Therefore, OH will be fed with uh, discharge. Remember, there are three factors, I have said the other time. You have the first factor of electrolysis, which is concentration of the ions in the electrolyte. If you check my previous video, you will see the factors clearly, clearly uh, listed. You have the first one as the concentration of the ions in the electrolyte. Second one is the nature of the electrode. And the third one is the position of the ions in the electrochemical series. In terms of this one, we are going to consider concentration because we are working in dilute solution. Concentration of the chloride ion is not sufficient because it's too small. Therefore, you use OH. Remember, a concentrated solution contains much of the solute and very little amount of water. Why dilute solution contains much water and very little amount of the solute you are dissolving in it. Now remember again, a solute is a substance which dissolves in a solvent to form a solution. Why a solvent is a medium that is capable of dissolving a solute to form a solution. But a solution is a complete, perfect, homogeneous mixture of a solute and a solvent. So we continue. Therefore, chloride cannot grow You have OH just because of the, uh, of the concentration. You have OH minus the discharge the single electron is carrying and OH will combine with another OH to form H2O plus O. O will combine with the pairs to give you O2 gas, which is also being given off, just like hydrogen is giving off. So in this solution, look at it very well. In this solution, hydrogen is discharged at the cathode and oxygen is discharged at the anode. In which case, the solution also becomes more concentrated with sodium chloride. You understand? More concerned with sodium chloride. So, remember, sodium chloride is a neutral solution. Therefore, the solution becomes more concentrated with the 
salt. So this is how you carry out electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride solution. Water is also being removed. Now let's go to the other aspect of electrolysis of concentrated concentrated conch means concentrated sodium chloride solution. Now the same process happens. Let's say you have uh, you have uh, NaCl. We also give you Na plus Cl minus. This is electrolysis of concentrated. Whether concentrated or dilute, both of them are dissolved in solution. It's all, all, both of them are aqueous. So you have aqueous solution here. It goes. Then you have water, which is a liquid. It goes like this: H plus OH minus. Remember, both of them are positive, and this one is negative. So you have the same process. It's just a very interesting topic because they follow the same principle. So you have a decathode, which is negative. Here, let's call it the anode, which is positive. Electrolysis processes are just the same. So you have a, a decathode, even though um, uh, sodium chloride, uh, sodium is here, because it is very high in the activity series, or what they call electrochemical series, it will be fair to remain in solution as ions, whereas the hydrogen will always be discharged. Remember, the only condition in which hyd uh, sodium will go is when you are dealing with molten, no water in it. Therefore, there's no, riv no, no rival. It doesn't have competition. But here, because there is dissolved in, in as much as it dissolves in solution, Sodium, potassium, calcium can never be discharged. They remain in solution because they are too electropositive. We have hydrogen. We combine, we combine with, we take up electron here because it's rich in electron, as we said before, to give you H. So hydrogen plus hydrogen to give you H2 gas. Remember, these are um, a breakdown, a summarized breakdown of what the principle is talking about. But you have to be writing. You cannot just give equation. To study this thing and uh, understand it very well, you have to know how the ions are discharged, and which uh, how the ions, uh, how the electrolytes are ionized, and how they are discharged and discharged at the various electrodes, which is the cathode and the anode. Then you now have to write something. You don't just give equation and you expect a perfect result or A. You must tell them what is happening, just as I'm explaining it to you and making it uh, very, very easy for you to understand, to comprehend. So you have hydro, both of them will migrate to the cathode. That's what you always write. Both of them migrate to the cathode. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, but only hydrogen will be discharged because of the position, which is very low in the electrochemical series. Remember, those that are lower in the electrochemical series are usually preferred. So, you have this one to give you that. Then, at the anode, because we are dealing with concentrated form, therefore, this one is too, that is too concentrated chloride to be taken because the ions here are very, very small. Unlike this, that they have enough ions, enough ions migrating. You see it? So, you have this one as Cl. Cl with uh, minus will discharge uh, the electrons that is in, makes it in excess. So you see that giving out the single electrons to the anode, therefore it becomes neutral chlorine. Neutral chlorine will combine with another chlorine to give you Cl2, which is a gas, and is also discharged. Now, if you look at the solution, this is where some other questions can easily come up in your standard exam. Maybe WAEC, NAPTEP, um, MECO, whichever exam it is, even JAM. This is where some other questions will come up. They will not just leave it like this and you run away, no. They may ask some other uh, intelligent questions and want you to give intelligent answers. Now, look at it. When I mean intelligent questions, they know you already understand this topic. So they will ask some questions that will make them to really know whether you know what you actually, uh, what the topic is actually all about. Now, you have said to them that at the cathode, you have hydrogen. And at the anode, you have chlorine. Remember, we have H2 plus Cl2 give you 2H. Cl, meaning acid. This is acid. Acid is being given off. Eh? Remember, we have sodium chloride and uh, water. Acid is being discharged, meaning chloride is removed and hydrogen is removed. Therefore, the remaining solution is sodium hydroxide. What the examination body will ask you, which you should be able to answer them intelligently, is what is the effect of litmus paper on the final solution? And when you want to answer, ensure that you don't just narrow your own to one type of litmus paper. So you just rush it. You change blue litmus, uh, red litmus paper to blue. It's correct. There are times examination body will not give you the answer. Remember, they did not specify the litmus paper. They said, what is the effect of litmus paper? And again, another thing you must know is this. You don't just say litmus, uh, litmus paper changes or change that. You say damp litmus paper, wet litmus. If you don't put that wet, they may not give you the answer. They may not give you the mark because... The ions are only made available when the solution, when the litmus paper is damp. That's when it's wet. Ions are not ready. 
to produce the color change. If it is not wet, it becomes difficult. Even though at times it can still prevail, it's not as effective as when it is damp or wet. Therefore, because it's not a, a, an alkaline solution, the effect of litmus paper is that you say it changes red litmus paper, wet red litmus paper to blue, and have no effect on wet blue litmus paper. So this is how you carry out electrolysis of sodium chloride, both concentrated and dilute. They must be carried out separately. Remember, for dilute, dilute sodium chloride solution, you have as, uh, little ions of uh, chloride, little chloride ions. Why? Therefore, OH is discharged. But in concentrated sodium chloride solution, you have enough ions of sodium chloride. So concentration have much to play here. That's why chloride ion is given up as a gas after losing the single electrons. Thank you very much, my beloved uh, viewers. God bless you. But I always told you, I know some of you are doing it, and God will continue to bless you. Those of you that have not started sharing this channel, please try and help us out. It is your continuous sharing of this channel that keeps it going and encourages us. God bless you. Thank you.